when I was 15, 16 years old, I, it was absolutely perfect life I was living. Um, I was I was the best in the country at swimming 100 meters backstroke, and I was on my way to the Sydney Olympics almost certainly. But then, unfortunately, when I was 17, things started going a little bit wrong. I went to a world a world schools championships in China, and I was meant well. I was seeded first, so I was meant to be the fastest in the whole competition. But I came eighth, and eighth is horrendous. And I came back home. Um, and I was really, really ill, so I went to see the GP, and they said, um, you've got a bit of a flutter in your eyes, so I think you've got to go and see a neurologist, um, or an ENT doctor, ears, nose and throat doctor. So I went to see all these doctors, um, and when I went to see the neurologist, he told me I had to go and have a brain scan. Um, how scary is a brain scan? <laughs> so, so I was 17 years old at this point, and my, my kind of Olympic dreams were all there. I was all ready to, to go to Olympics and hopefully win a medal, and all of this, um, but unfortunately, um, the, the neurologist told me that my brain scan showed a lot of scarring on my brain and it showed, um, showed you know, signs of multiple sclerosis. Uh, I was diagnosed when I was 18 years and 4 days old, which is you know, not a very nice birthday present, I don't think, so <laughs> I was a bit annoyed. Um, and that was also the end of all my Olympic dreams, really. After China, I, I got sicker and sicker, I went blind three times, so my, I lost um, both my eyesight, like, I, uh, the whole eyesight in both my eyes, which was horrendous. Um, and I was paralysed once, so I woke up one morning and I couldn't move, I couldn't see, I couldn't do anything. Um, and I was screaming and shouting for some help, but nobody was in the house, so that was pretty horrendous. Uh, in the end, quite, um, quite thankfully, my, my young brother came in and he, he kind of dragged me to the, to the uh, toilet, which was fantastic. So I'm still, you know, thankful of him. <laughs> so yeah, he's incredible. So that was two of the, uh, the hard times, the blind and the paralysed. But I also struggled with walking, so everywhere I went I used the wall as kind of my, my wheelchair or my handrail or whatever. So the walls are very thankful, I'm glad they're so hard and they, they don't fall over if you push them. So yeah, so walls are fantastic. Um, and so I struggled with walking, struggled with seeing, struggled with everything. My whole body had kind of given up on me, it was a real shame. So I, I'd also given up swimming because I was doing 40 hours a week in the pool, but when you can't see and you keep bumping into other swimmers, it's you know not very fair. <laughs> so I got out of the pool and um, and I hadn't swam for, for that whole six months. It wasn't good. When when I was diagnosed with MS, I was, there was one drug that could have helped me. It's called beta interferon, um, and beta interferon is an injection drug. So I would have had to learn to inject myself. But obviously, I had a fear of needles. This was you know not nice. So, um, but I wasn't allowed the drug because I lived in Wiltshire and not in Bath, North East Somerset or you know, anywhere else in the whole, whole country. And because the National Health Authority for some reason didn't offer it in, in my, uh, my county, I had to, had to try and fight for it. The Bath Chronicle definitely got on my side and they, they publicised my, my little fight lots and um, they were fantastic. But the, I also had the MP James Gray, who was the MP of Wiltshire, and he took me to the House of Commons and we went and fought for, for my case really and fought for everyone in Wiltshire because this is meant to be a you know national health authority, not a you know semi-national health authority. So in the end I won the won the drug, I won the fight and um, I was allowed the drug on a, an apparent trial basis. Um, but I, I learnt to inject myself, I learnt to take these, uh, these this medication and it definitely helped me. Um, even if it was only you know psychologically it definitely helped me. About five or six years later um, I, w I was back in the pool with a friend of mine and uh, I, and they said, can you teach my friend how to swim? And I wasn't very good at swimming then, I was just kind of trying to lose, lose some weight. Because uh, the first time I went back to the pool, I asked my mum to come with me. And because I needed some help to get to the pool and, you know, from the pool back to the changing rooms. Um, and my mum said, there's no way I can come with you again, it's just too hard for me. So I thought I was very sad. I had to, had to take myself there, I had to, you know, use the walls again to try and get to the pool and back. Um, but I was getting stronger, which is good. Um, but yeah, the one time when I was in the pool, a friend of mine said, can you teach my friend how to swim? Because he wants to do a triathlon and, um, and you know, he, he needs to learn how to swim properly <laughs> to do a triathlon. So, uh, so I went over to this guy, he's called Adrian, um, he is now my husband, and he hasn't done that triathlon, but he does know how to swim. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. Uh, Adrian was my inspiration for coming back to, to swimming again. 
um, he said, you've still got the strokes, you, you're still, you know, you're still a good swimmer, why don't you go to London, tw London 2012, because we've just won it, you know, you might as well, go back as a Paralympic swimmer, and I said, no, I'm too old, too fat, too ugly, whatever, <laughs> I, I gave him all the excuses, but it kind of got the, the brain thinking, yeah, maybe I could, because I still had that Olympic dream, you know, I still wanted that, or I still want that Olympic gold medal, I'm still fighting for that big Olympic gold medal, I've got <laughs> silvers, but no, no, no gold yet. Um, and so I went, I, I found myself a coach in Swansea, so I had to move to Swansea for a little while. Um, and his, his name is Billy Pye, and he taught me, or re-taught me how to swim properly. Um, and we went to Beijing, got off seven weeks of training, and I won fourth, fifth and sixth place, which is not too bad off seven weeks. <laughs> um, seven weeks, of, you know, seventh, fourth best in the world, not too bad. So I thought four years later I went to London and I won four silvers and one bronze. Which again is not too bad, but you still need that freaking gold. <laughs> the book started basically because I wrote a poem one day when I was crying my eyes out. Like, obviously, losing every, losing your whole life is you know quite a bad thing. So I was crying away. Um, my little dog was in my room with me, and I was, I was just writing this poem. The next morning, I woke up, and the poem was quite good. So I thought, oh, I'll send it to the Bath Chronicle to be printed. They printed it the next day, and. Um, it was perfect because somebody read the poem, and the poem's called Paying the Price, and the, they read it and they said, can I make this into a song, please, to raise money for MS? And so the, the song was um, was produced and it's still still around and it's still available, raising money for MS, which is wonderful. So thanks, Bath Chronicle, <laughs> for the promotion. Yeah, so, um, so that was kind of the start, and that was the first chapter of the book. Um, I started thinking about my life and how how I went through all these horrible things, but yeah, I've come out of it, you know, getting better and better, and all I need, needed really was, you know, a bit of positivity. Um, and I believe also that, like, MS is all in the mind, so you can control it using your mind. So that's why I wrote the poem, I write, wrote the book. I want to make sure that other people stay in this right frame of mind and fight every day just like I did, so that you get on top at the end. Um, some of the money raised by the book is gonna go to the MS Society, and to writing for the disabled because they're very important charities to me and also mutual support which is the, the Armed Forces MS Society so I think it will be wonderful to, to, to help these charities out because they've definitely helped me out.